Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Mourinho Challenge and today we've got the chance at our third trophy against West Ham United in the Europa League final. Fantastic. I can't believe we quite got here to be honest. It's fantastic. It's absolutely amazing. Um, but let's show you how we got there. Before we do though, I will quickly just update you. Gabriel Barbosa will be joining us at the end of the season. Um, a player that we've brought in who's actually pretty phenomenal to be honest uh, for playing in the Brazilian league I think he can fit in absolutely fine at the club um, following a previous spell uh, we should say on loan at Benfica only playing one game but this time around I think it might be different hopefully I think we might stick around for one more season uh, as kind of how well we've done this year and the kind of upgrades we've made to the squad so I think we should be fine but we'll take a look around of course and I'll update you constantly but let's jump into how we've got to the final of the Europa League. So we were put into the Europa League due to being knocked out of the Champions League qualifying by Monaco and we took to it like a duck to water. A free kick and a penalty from João Mario gave us a 2-0 we win against Maccabi Haifa. Our next game in the Europa League, though, did give us a bit of a challenge. Worried me slightly. Sparta Prague won this one 3-1, initially getting a goal in the 39th minute, just before half-time, to give them a 1-0 lead through Mali. They then got a second just after half-time, in fact, where a lovely switch over the top found measure, and he slotted it home for 2-0. That didn't stop things there, though, as it did lead to them getting another goal. Um, a long ball over the top, Haraland getting onto the end of that. A ball across found, again, Maja empty at the back post with no man around him, which gave him a 3-0 lead. We did manage to get one back from the penalty spot, but it wasn't enough to get any points from this one. We corrected things in our third game, though, in the Europa League with a 2-1 home win against Genk. Uh, it was a little bit shaky to start with, but Darwin Nunes calmed the nerves on the 20th minute mark to give us a 1-0 lead and then a second goal wasn't to come until after they've started to cause issues. Onuachu, the big striker, nodded it down to Ugbo to make it 1-0 straight away. Uh, it, that kept the nerves coming straight back to us but just before half time we were able to get the second to give us the lead to go into the break and to end up winning the game. Uh, the ball fall into Rafa in the box who just popped it past the keeper. In the return leg to Belgium, though, we did manage to get a 3-2 win as well. Uh, a little bit more exciting this one with a couple more goals, but Jeremczuk's ball across found Darwin quite comfortably there to give us a 1-0 lead in the 17th minute. Uh, on the hour mark, we then managed to get a second to give us a bit more of a comfortable area. Weigl's ball over the top found Darwin Nunes, again, smashing it into the roof of the net. A player that we thought would be very much missed, but as I've mentioned before, We've had a lot of players step up and cause issues with that. Uh, Onuachu was played through and managed to get a goal to give him a, some form of comeback to make it 2-1. We did get a third, though, to give us that comfort back with the two-goal lead. Goncalves finding Yuremchuk, who's sliding past Van Weigel, who tucked it home on his left foot. Uh, of course, they did manage to get a second from the penalty spot. Payne still this time scoring the goal, but it was 3-2. In the home game against Maccabi Haifa, the boys decided to go off on one. 8-0 was the score in this one. Morata scoring in the first minute. Uh, and then only seven minutes later, we got our second. Gil Diaz bombing down the left-hand side, fired the ball across. And Ramos, after a bit of a deflection, it dropped to Everton. And he just poked it home into an open net. Uh, almost identical again only a couple minutes later Gil Diaz again on the left hand side was able to play into Weigl this time rather than lacrosse who did find Goncalves at the back post for the header that made it three and of course it didn't stop there in the second half we were able to get our fourth a switch of play over to Gil Diaz again who's been very very influential in this game had a shot which the keeper maybe should have been done a little bit better for but if you don't take your shot, you don't score. And that gave us the fourth. Uh, the fifth came in the 69th minute. Mete's long ball over the top found Ramos, who just dinked the keeper into the left-hand side. That was a lovely, lovely finish. But we, again, weren't stopped there. Ramos this time coming forward, playing it into Gilberto's pass, who ended up leaving us not long after this, uh, who's fired the ball across, found Jeremchuk for a lovely little tap-in. 
And of course, we again weren't finished there. Gilberto again this time on the right-hand side, almost identical positioning, was able to get that ball lifted this time into the box. Jerome Chuk's header found Ramos at the back post, who beat his defender to pop it away. And then we had Mete again playing the ball forward to Yuremchuk, whose left-footed volley into the near post got us the next one. We did end up getting our revenge against Sparta Prague with a 2-0 win in the last game of the group. Jao Mario scoring from the penalty spot to give us the lead. And then just after the second half uh, started, Yuremchuk was it being playing down the right-hand side, who found Rafa to pop it home for two. So our next game was against Leipzig in the knockout round, the first one of this season. And it was started off with a 0-0 draw away from home. Leipzig caused a lot of problems for us, but we were able to hold on to keep the score at 0-0. In the second leg, we made the most of our home advantage, though. And in the eighth minute, we were able to take the lead. Mario finding Yuremchuk on the right-hand side, who rifled it into the bottom left-hand corner to give us the 1-0 lead. It was then Leipzig's turn to level things up on the 30th minute. It fell to Forsberg, who played it through to Andre Silva, who was able to turn and knock it to Olmo, who popped it into the right-hand corner of the goal. But we were able to finally get that goal to seal the deal 2-1 in the 49th minute, just after half-time. A ball through to Yuremchuk, who was able to dink the keeper lovely for 2-1. In the quarterfinals, we did take on Shakhtar and it was a poor, poor start from us in the first leg away in Ukraine. Marlos was took the lead for Shakhtar, taking it round the keeper and slotting it past him into the open net. And then again, they were able to get a second just before half time. Dodo playing it into Stefanenko, who was able to slot Sikan through, who again scored to make it 2-0. It was not looking pretty for us here with a third coming in in the 70th minute. Back post, a lovely header by Sikan to get his second of the game. We were able to get one away goal though, after a poor header was cut out by Rafa, who then was able to pop that through to Diva Karigi to make it 3-1. I then had a word with the boys and said, you need to up your game. And they certainly did for the second leg. At home, we got a goal in the 54th minute from Gomez to give us that 1-0 lead. And then a second came on the 73rd. It was played through to Orisic, who on that right foot popped it home, as I was mentioning last time out. Um, he comes in on that left-hand side and slides it home to make it 2-0. We then meant we were level, and this was the third to break the back. It was Origi who was played through, slotted it past the keeper to make it 3, and it gave us the lead on aggregate. In the 83rd, we topped it off with another goal. Origi, this time on the left-hand side, delivers the ball across, and it was Gedson Fernandez header that found Uremchuk to make it 4 and then finally, we weren't quite finished there with Orisic playing into Rafa, who had lots of space there, finding Origi, who was then put through to Uremchuk, which finished it off nicely with a 5-0 win. We then took on probably our hardest opponents in the semi-final, uh, a Leicester City side who went down to 10 men in the first seven minutes, Jamie Vardy getting sent off. Uh, we took full advantage with that. Um, Adel Tarat getting the goal first in early on and then it was the second that came in the second half where Orosic was able to score from an adult assist uh, a lovely 2-0 lead was gained there and finally the third came in the 55th minute Fernandez finding Tarat who played it through to Uremchuk who had a 1-2 with the post to make it three with a comfortable 3-0 lead going into the second leg we didn't want to make any issue of it Although Leicester had different ideas. For Fana scoring a header in the first half to give us some worry. We were able to level things off with a lovely pass by Rafa. There it was to Orsic. He found Nuremchuk to tap it at home for the leveller there. And then Albrighton on the right hand side decided, nope, he's had enough. He bombed it down there, got to the byline, lifted it to the back post. For Gonzalez, the former Benfica man who we'd in fact sold to them not long ago um, to make it two for him. We were able to again level things though with Uremchuk receiving the ball from Rafa. Origi taking a touch inside the defender and slotting it home. They were able to get a third but the, t the lead we had in the first leg gave us the full advantage we needed. Rafina playing it out wide to Justin who was able to then get the ball across to find Gonzalez for his second. But we got it through and made it to the final.
And as I said, here we are. West Ham United in the Europa Cup final. And we will show you the team we've got. We've got a couple of injuries. Um, unfortunately, Everton has been ruled out due to injury. So won't be able to play. Verissimo isn't quite back yet. And obviously, Jan Mario has been out for a long, long period now. Um, so we've got a slightly changed round team a little bit uh, with... Odysseys in goal. We've got Morato, Otamendi, and Joe Gomez at the back. Goncalves, Fernandez, Weigel, and Orsic in the midfield. Rafa just in front with Origi and Juremchuk up top. But I'm feeling confident. I think the boys have got plenty in the bag to do enough. Uh, hopefully, West Ham aren't fancying it today and just will let us roll them over like we did with Porto in the other cup in the last episode. But it will be tough. It's not going to be easy. They've got the likes of Suchek and Rice. Martial on loan. We were looking at the start of the season and Vlasic as well. Um, so, yeah, it's it's going to be tough. But we've got the boys to do it. And I, I'm feeling feeling pretty confident that we can, we can get that done. Let's jump into it and take a look then. So it's a ball forward which Orosic was able to latch onto after a cleared header from Zuma. Uh, it looks like we might be able to get in a shot off here. Rafa's a little injured but takes aim and fires it towards goal. It does end up over the bar, but an effort's an effort. If you don't shoot, you don't score. I hopefully, I was kind of hoping he would be looking for that pass rather than the shot like he normally does and, and slip someone through. But we're coming forward again, half an hour in. Goncalves on that side now, who plays it to Weigl, who's able to play it all the way back to Joe Gomez, who looks very on his own back there. Um, Gensen Fernandez, Otamendi's there as well, who'd obviously gone into the box to try and win a header from across although it didn't actually come in in the end. Joe Gomez again, though, playing it back to Otamendi, keeping the ball very, very nicely, and it goes all the way back to Odysseys, who's got plenty of time, plays it out to Diaz, who loses the ball to Rice in the air, and now Jared Bowen plays it through to Vlasic, who's got a bit of pace, who can get around the back, shoots, it hits the crossbar. Um, we get lucky there, and it stays nil-nil for now. But they do have a corner almost straight away from that, the ball comes in, Vlasic with the header this time, and it goes over the bar. Free kick for West Ham. Pablo Fornaus is stood over it. He's a very good free kick taker. Hopefully he's not today, and it's just wide. Oh, it looks like it was saved, actually. I thought it had gone out for a goal kick, but in fact, it looks like it might have been saved and ended up being cleared in the end. It's coming down to five minutes to half time. It's a close, close game so far. Very, very even I think both teams are a little bit wary of one another. Um, I don't really want to take Rafa off because of how good he is. Um, but the injury is affecting him. Maybe I'll leave him on for a little longer uh, and just see how he goes. I think we might have to take Orsic off, though, and bring Diaz on for that one. Um, we'll leave it at that, though, for now. In the second half, we'll change things up. I think we're going to go a little bit more positive, though. That is the one thing we will change. Um... We have made chances, but I think we can make more and, and cause them a bit more trouble going forward. They've had some clear-cut chances, which we haven't. But Joe Gomez's throw-in does find Diaz, who's just come on at half-time. Um, and he keeps it very well with Weigel and Gederson Fernandez in control there. Otamendi then switches it out wide to Morato, who then fires Concalves. The ball switch from one side to the other here, and Fernandez is back on it. Plays it through to Origi, who's got behind the defence. Is he able to get a ball into the box? He plays it back to Concalves, whose shot hits the bar. It's absolutely rattled it there. A lovely strike, but not able to get it on goal. Diaz's ball across is unfortunately caught by Ariola, and West Ham will now have time to re organize and look to form an attack themselves we're 10 minutes into the second half and that was a very positive start i have to say the the positive change of going slightly more attacking is is looks good um rafa is looking a bit like he's been affected by that injury so what i will do is bring adel Tarat on not one you'd normally think about bringing on but i think he's got a point to prove against the premier league opposition as he wasn't as good in the Prem as he was in the Championship when he was at QPR and Tottenham. So it will be certainly something for him to prove, which I'm hoping will spice him up a little bit. Julian Weigl taking his, all the time in the world there to um, play the ball forward to Diaz uh, and gets it back there. Plenty of time, no pressure on him whatsoever to um, play the ball quickly, which is absolutely fine by us. If they want to just let us take our time and, and think about the pass, we make that is no problem at all. Joe Gomez now on the ball finds Gensen Fernandez, who's able to turn and has a bit of time. Adel Tarat now he's come on the field and Rice has come flying in there 
He's calling, the ref's called him over. And it's a, is that a sending off? It is, it's a sending off. They brought on Angelo Bonner and they've gone to a five at the back now with that happening. Um, Adel Tarat coming on and getting a player sent off. But Kufal's won the ball nicely off Diaz on that right-hand side. Um, we have been able to get back and it is cut out by Julian Weigel. Yeremchuk now into Adel Tarat. He's looked very good since coming on, having won the sending off. Can you win a sending off? I don't know, but Gonkava's ball through to Yeremchuk. Can he finish it? We've got the advantage. There it is. It's 1-0. They're going to have to come at us now. And we have the massive advantage of our boys doing very well and having the extra man. A lovely, lovely finish by Yeremchuk there after a good ball through. I'm very, very happy with that. Gonkava's saw the run. Yeremchuk got there. And he was able to slot it home past the keeper, having to get round him. Lovely 1-0. 15 minutes to go then. And it is closing off slowly. 10 minutes. Should we make another change? I think we might do. Um, Divock Origi, we will in fact take off and bring Concalo Ramos on for him. Just for a few more legs up top. They've got a limited amount of players there to really be able to cause this issue. Masuaku though, from the corner, which is an issue, as that can be something they can kind of match us with martial coming down the right hand side he's loaned on loan from man united and found masawaku at the back foot suchek ball in martial it's saved initially and then it's put in but it could be deemed offside is he going to be found offside i i hope so because that would be very frustrating if they've just scored in the 85th minute um <laughs> we'll see seconds there and it's been awarded. There you go. 1-0. That is not good at all. Marshall's ball in. Found Masuaku, who played it back to Suchek, who again, he's a free man there. I mean, I don't I don't quite understand what the boys are doing. They're kind of all over the shop at the back here. Um, but Martial was free to enter the box on his own and head it home. There's six minutes added time. We've got the advantage of the extra man. So if it does go to extra time, we've got plenty um to kind of work with but Goncalves on the right hand side I'd like to finish things off in normal time I don't really want it to go to extra time the ball through's not found anyone and Ogbon is there to cut it out and plays it into Dawson um but Ramos is there to cut it out but again West Ham get it back and they start to recycle things again can we close it down and cause them issues the ball's played forward but Morato able to win that Goncalves now He's on a yellow card, so we might have to look to take him off at some stage because we don't want him getting sent off and levelling things up again. Um, but the ball's fat played in. Yeremchuk with the header. He's Is that a save or, or hit the post? That was incredible. We, apparently, we're enjoying ourselves, but I mean, I'm not. Not until we get the lead again after going 1-0 up against the 10-man West Ham. Ball comes in. Ramos isn't able to get there, but it does fall to Goncalves once more. Plays it back to Gensen Fernandes, whose long-range effort. There it is. It's his first goal of the season. And it gives us the lead in the final of the Europa League. One minute to go in extra time, or added time, I should say. Oh, that gives me a sigh of relief for sure. The ball played in. Weigl's ball... Wasn't quite able to find Ramos. Goncalves was able to take it down and play it into Gensen Fernandez. Takes a touch and just strikes it from the edge of the box to give us that lead. 2-1 in the dying moments of the game. His first goal of the season as well. And there we have it. We won the Europa League. Excellent victory. That is three trophies in the first season. You'll see at the end of this video, them all up on that board with Jose Mourinho's next to it. In one season, three trophies. So we've got 22 to get in 19 seasons. That is brilliant. That is so, so good. That's such a good start to the series. And it gives us such a good opportunity to be able to actually complete this. Um, if we have another season like that at Benfica, we'll be fine. Um, or at least have a great start. But we can't stick at Benfica for too long. We've only got one more year with them if we want to stay here. Uh, and we'll have to mo then move on. So, yeah, there we have it. A Europa League win. We'll jump to the season review and take a quick look at that. So here we are then, end of season review. Three trophies in our first season of the challenge. What a result that is. Let's take a look through at how the season went. So the star man who we brought in is apparently Miroslav Orsic. Can't really argue with that. He's been brilliant. Nine goals, seven assists since coming in. 
Juremchuk as well, who came in from Genk um, before we got here, was fantastic. 31 goals, 18 assists. Brilliant. Divock I have to say, was a lot better than I thought he would be. Um, performed very well. Joe Gomez, good signing. Shored things up at the back for us. Jao Mario and Lazaro both came in from Inter Milan. Lazaro will be leaving as he's only on loan, but Jao Mario was very, very good before his injury. Uh, Gil Diaz came in from Monaco uh, for 1.3 million. He played a lot of games and did pretty good. And Etienne Capu's 12 games, he came in as a backup for a reason and he did the job. So I'm absolutely fine with that. Transfers out. Obviously, Steferovic left us to Alain, who looks like he did pretty well in the end for them. Uh, wasn't getting the game time. Probably wouldn't have done either. Uh, Mate as well. Helton also went. Another player that wasn't going to get the game time for us. Uh, Gilberto, another player. Uh, Franco Servi. We didn't decide that, but he's gone. Not too worried about that. And a few others down there as well. As you can see, Grimaldo. He left us after a good performances. And Darwin Nunes hasn't quite been able to catch the form he had for us before wanting to leave, which isn't too bad. And Pizzi as well, off to Wolves. So they signed a couple of boys off us. But there you go. Oh, and of course, Andrea Maldo at the, end, at the beginning of the season, which is very interesting indeed. So Wolves, as always, liking the Portuguese players. Bunch of lone players that will be coming back to us at the end of the season. Looking likely that we'll want to use Vinicius Um I mean, 26 goals and 10 assists is not bad at all for PSV in the Eredivisie. So hopefully he comes back and scores goals for us. We only lost three games all season. Um, we had a phenomenal start to the season. Uh, it did drop off slightly in the middle in January time uh, and near the end of the season. But we were able to get the points we needed to get uh, the win on the league. Excellent stuff. Top goal scorer was Everton in the end. Uh, Champions League. We'll ignore that. We got knocked out of that one. Um, but we won the Europa League as after a fantastic run, as you saw today. And, of course, we also won the Portuguese Cup. A, a great, great win there against Porto. The Portuguese League Cup was also one that we we got to the final of, but weren't quite able to get past Sporting um, due to some dodgy dealings with internationals and that sort of thing. We'll blame that anyway, um, rather than anything else. But there you go. Uh, moments to remember, an 8-0 win against Maccabee Haifa was our highest win or biggest win. I mean, brilliant. The match to remember was the league winning match where Origi, Orsic, Ndor and Ramos all scored against Belenses after Nuno got sent off. And then goal of the season was Mario who got the goal against Maccabee Haifa. Um, there you go. I can't imagine it would have been the penalty, that's for sure. Lots of new sponsors. Money, money, money is all coming in. We're continental reputation as we were before. Rafa, Jao Mario, Yeremchuk, Orsic and Everton all getting high shirt sales. Nice to see Orsic on there considering he only just joined halfway through the season. Um, and this is the team of the season for us. Darwin Nunes up top, who I think we could probably swap out, to be quite honest. Um, as he left us and we could bring in some other players. But Orsic slides in there nicely. Lucas Verissimo, Morato Otamendi as well. Odysseys, of course, who played 61 games for us this season, which is quite a ridiculous number. Um, Goncalves, Weigl, Fernandes in the middle. Uh, and, of course, Rafa, Nunes and Juremchuk up the top there. Accolades-wise, we got Manager of the Month for four months running. Uh, as you can see, I am an international footballer, so six goals and, and 15 caps. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty good. That's also a lie. I'm not. Um, <laughs> most assists by a player in a season was Juremchuk, 18. Odyssey's got 26 clean sheets. Uh, and Roman Juremchuk got seven man out of the matches. Uh, fans player of the season was Verissimo. He's a very, very good player. Young player was Morata. That, that kind of shows that our defensive performance was so good in comparison to what I thought it would have been. Um... So <laughs> that's not bad. Orsic was signing of the season. Top goal scorer, Juremchuk, and most assists. He was involved in almost, <laughs> quite ridiculously, 50 goals this season. So um, quite crazy, really. Competition awards. He won the Euro Europa League's top player. Player of the season, Juremchuk. Very, very nicely done. And there we have it. That is it. We won the Portuguese Premier League Euro Cup, Portuguese Cup. I'll make sure you see the title card, the card at the end of this, the video just to show you kind of all the trophies we've won this season uh, as I do in every video. And there we have it. 
What a win. What a result. What a season. Um, let's see how we go next season. If anything changes during preseason, obviously I'll show you that. Otherwise, we'll jump straight in at the beginning of next season with Benfica and try and do it all over again. See you in the next one.